So I've known Jack for quite a while now. I actually commentated on a fight of his in Cage Warriors many years ago against uh, an Iranian wrestler called Ali Arish. And I remember this Swedish guy coming over, thought this Iranian guy is going to get hold of him, out-wrestle him, probably make it a kind of boring fight. And then walks this Swedish Viking guy and out-wrestles the wrestler, punches his way to victory, walks out of there you know, with his arm raised. And I was blown away by that performance. And from that moment, I was, this, this is a guy that we've got to look out for. But then I was reintroduced to him back here at the UFC and he's just evolved as, as a complete mixed martial artist. But that wrestling base that he has is something that's evident in a lot of things that he does, gives him the confidence with his striking and then sets him up for, you know, what he now says is the most lethal ground and pound in the game. Yeah, when I've spoken to Jack, he's, he's talked about the fighters that he's really liked in the past, but he really settled on GSP, George St. Pierre being the guy that he really looked up to. And I think we see that with the way that Jack carries himself. He's very humble, very positive, can't do enough for you when, when you're working together. But that work ethic as well is going to take him very, very far. In a, in a time when we have a lot of athletes who seem to get more headlines for doing crazy things. I think he's a breath of fresh air, I really do. Just gonna be dependable and someone that we can rely on, particularly in Europe and Scandinavia, where we're trying to build the sport. Not a lot of people in the mainstream know our sport. They might have negative thoughts about it, but just go and take a look at Jack Hermanson and see what a wonderful example of a mixed martial artist is. And I think he'll do a really good job for us. If he gets the win here at home, the, the debut event for the UFC here in Copenhagen, like he's going to do big things. And as I've said before, like he, he's, he's the guy to fly the flag in this region now. Well, he's been in the middleweight division as far as UFC goes his whole career, but his ascent to the, into the ranks has been quite similar to mine. Routed off a couple of big wins, uh, stepped in short notice and got another one. Uh, a, a really huge win against uh, Jacques Ray, who was guaranteed a title shot with, uh, with a win. So um, that's crazy. He went in there and took that away from him. I'm not going to let that happen to me. I'm not letting anybody take anything away from me. Jack brings it, as do I. So when you see us clash, who knows what's going to happen. I feel great, focused, calm. Uh, I feel ready for the task uh, that uh, I had Saturday. I feel like um, it's dangerous uh, everywhere, but uh, mostly in the, in the stand-up game. Uh, he's very powerful, hard kicks and punches. So uh, I need to make sure that I don't get hit by them. I really believe that I can be the best in the world. I think the time is now. I'm ready to go for that title and show everybody that I'm the greatest middleweight uh, that's out there.
So he gets Cannonier. This is a risky fight. Jared Cannonier was a heavyweight fighter knocking people out. Now he's a middleweight fighter knocking people out. So it's a big ask for Jack to go in there, take this on home turf and deliver in front of the fans. But he's never sounded more confident. He actually has the style to overcome a power puncher like Cannonier. Equally, Cannonier has the style to stop a very mobile fighter like Jack. So it's, it's a fantastic styles matchup. This is one of the biggest moments ever in my life. It's, it's honestly not because I'm lazy with words, but it's difficult to describe. I'm very happy. In the cage, I could barely hear Bruce Buffer when I got introduced. I couldn't hear my corner in the fight. That's, that's crazy. If, is that, if that's not a fucking fairy tale, I don't know what is. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Mark Goddard has called a stop to this contest at 27 seconds of round number two. Declaring the winner by TKO, Jared the Killer Gorilla I, I thought that was going to be hard. Um, but when I was in those exchanges, uh, I felt like I really want to get back there and, uh, and, get, and, and get the takedown. And, uh, I think that was uh, probably, probably a little bit for uh, too obvious for him. So that's why he, he read it very well in the second round there and timed that up to uppercut that led to the, to the finish. Jack is a warrior. He doesn't care who it is, where it is, or when it is. He's going to go in there. He took, it, he took it to me. Most people, they just back away. They fold under the pressure. He took it to me. He went for his shots like he said he was going to do. He felt strong, and that was just an honor to be in here. And he tested me. I was able to rise to the occasion. I appreciate him. I give him all the respect in the world for that, for making me a better fighter, making me a better man. And I hope I did the same for you, my brother. Yeah, I'm not sure why I didn't perform tonight, but uh, I'll try to prepare even better in the future so, so I can, can perform uh, better. But, yeah, I'm in this sport uh, to fight and to grow, and uh, I don't want to be uh, sitting on the side and I watch uh, the other guys uh, do the job. I want to be in the myself. Yeah, you know, many people said I shouldn't take that, this fight with Jared. But I want to be the best in the world, and Jared showed me that I am not the best at the moment, and that I need to learn a lot. So I thank him for that, and I'm gonna do everything I can to get better and come back and continue my travel towards the top. I'm very sorry if I let people down today, 
I'm gonna go home and do my homework and make sure it doesn't happen again. Well, this crowd love you, my friend. They'll be behind you no matter what. Ladies and gentlemen, the Joker, Jack Hermanson. Thank you so much, guys.